Hi everyone, today let's talk about inflation heating back up, and is this the 1970s all over again? Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel, and let's get started. So inflation has been heating up for three months in a row, and it's definitely put a damper on the Fed's plans to potentially do some rate cuts. Now this is a pretty long article, so I'm not going to get into every single detail of it, but I do want to highlight some of the things that we're talking about. So in the 1970s, there was some geo geopolitical risk. We were very dependent on foreign oil oil and there were some structural factors that did not allow inflation to come down in the same way that it has so far. Inflation also went much higher in the 1970s so let's take a look at it here. So CPI 1970s got all the way up into the 12s. We were not that high. We did get into the 9s which was pretty aggressive but you can see here we're hovering slightly higher low. Does seem to have a decent correlation and then eventually we did get that bigger spike here over the next several years. It did take a very long time to happen here so you can see that initial push 1975 and then that second peak of inflation didn't come until around 1980 1981 so again it's hard to it's hard to keep this in your short-term trading but you should definitely keep this kind of correlation in the back of your mind can we see a move like this again it's absolutely possible for sure and if this ultimately comes to pass it's obviously going to spell much weaker markets so let's see what we're talking about 1973 we're seeing oil crises come in and that oil crisis really did put a huge damper on markets and that's part of what started to create a stagnant demand weaker economy which sent inflation higher so you could argue that that oil shock was the catalyst that generated that economic pullback or the recession during that time period but they mention here there are a few similarities so we have central banks that were super accommodative during that 2008-2009 crisis. And then we saw a very similar move on the COVID during the COVID time period where we injected a bunch of cash. You could argue that was a bit of a global shock as well, which is what they're arguing here. COVID shaking up the trading patterns, shaking up the energy and technological environment. And since then, we have seen oil prices surging, not nearly as much as the 1970s because the United States is a net exporter of oil, which means we're not super dependent on OPEC, which is what they're highlighting here. So the dependency on oil, U.S. is a net exporter. So today's inflation, you could argue, is healthier. The central bank is more responsive. But overall, a second wave is certainly a potential. And I do think that's why the Fed is being so patient. And we should absolutely keep this in the back of our minds as a potential correlation. Looking at the fear and greed index here, you can see we're at a 40, closed on Thursday at a 36. A week ago, we were at 42. So you can see we're still in this downtrend. We held a slightly higher low here on the fear and greed index at a 36. Previous low here was a 32. So it seems like there's a little bit of bullishness coming. We see momentum stepping back into greed, strength still hovering in extreme fear. And we also saw volatility break down this week, all the way back down into the lows that we were seeing back in mid-March. And then safe haven demand sitting in extreme fear and junk bond demand back into regular greed. This did pull back a little bit on that Friday session as yields were falling on the back of that employment data. Moving over to the AAII survey, you can see bulls stepped all the way back up to a 38.5. We did see a pretty bullish week. Neutral got squeezed down to a 28, and then the bears sitting pretty much flat here at a 32.5. So bulls stepping back into markets after dipping down to a 32 two weeks ago. And that's a pretty bullish indicator. I think we'll probably see at least one more week of bullishness on the back of this data. Moving over to seasonality. Remember, we continue to think this is a little bit shifted to the right here. So we're expecting one more week of bullishness. Then we should see a pretty decent down move one to two percent at least potentially further and then we would expect a slight pullback and a double bottom at that point and then this rally is probably going to come in that first or second week of june so this is currently shifted in my opinion but understand this is a seasonally weak period for may looking at the calendar you can see consumer credit here for wednesday for tuesday and that is typically a bullish day wholesale trade on wednesday treasury budget here on friday and you can see this friday is typically quite bullish up 19 of the last 29 which leads into a bearish Monday for the 13th and then a bearish options expiration on the 17th. Moving over to Fed futures, I want to highlight some of the changes here. On the unemployment data, you can see this stepped all the way up to a 91. So current probability at a 91 for a hold. 
I still don't think anything's happening until September. And the data is still pointing to that. I've been saying that for a while before the data was pointing to it, but it's definitely true now. At a 65 here for July. And then looking at September, like I mentioned, the first potential fur cut here in September at a 48.8 as the highest percentage. And that stepped up from a 45 to a 48 on the Friday session on that unemployment data. So seems more likely now that we're going to get that first cut in September. And then looking at November, still holding here for November, slight potential for one more cut. And then that second cut expect to come in December. So currently markets are pricing in two cuts this year. And I think it'll be interesting to see if we actually get this second one in December. I think we're going to get one, but we need to see a little bit better data on the inflation front before that happens. Moving over into the earnings calendar, you can see Berkshire Hathaway, Simon Property Group, Realty Income, Tyson Foods here for Monday. And then looking at Tuesday, we got Disney, Duke Energy, Occidental Petroleum. I think it'll be interesting to see how Disney does. They've had a pretty rocky year. And then looking at Wednesday, you got Uber, Airbnb, and Trade Desk. And then finishing up the week for Thursday, Constellation Energy, pretty much the only one important. Warner Brothers, I think they're kind of interesting because they're potentially going to get taken over. And that'll pretty much wrap it up for the earnings week. And really the earnings season as a whole is just about finished. Moving over to the economic data, pretty much nothing here for Monday. Looking at Tuesday, three-year note auction, pretty much it. Pretty light on the data this this week. Ten-year note auction on Wednesday, that'll be interesting. Fed balance sheet on Thursday. Initial jobless claims, 30-year note auction. And then looking at Friday, really light here. Michigan data for inflation. Got a Fed member speaking. And that's pretty much it. So really no major news or major earnings that are going to push around markets this week. So in theory, we could follow the current trend. And then looking at Max Payne here, you can see only 1.31 on the put call ratio. Total options, only 400,000. So really there is nothing in markets that is going to push them around. It seems like they're going to move on their own volition. So we'll see what the sentiment is out there. My guess is that it will be slightly bullish. 509 is a decent call wall, but the options are so small here, only 23,000. We finished at the top of the puts last week and this week if we finish there that would be around 516 or about a one percent up move some puts here at 490 and 500 but again the option levels are so small 22,000 17,000 I don't think those are really going to push around markets top of the market right now I would say is probably going to be 525 520 probably more realistic so one one and a half percent higher is probably what we're looking at based on max pain moving over to the charts starting off with the S&Ps here on the monthly chart you can see we did get that April close which was quite bearish 4.1 1.16% to the downside. And then so far, May has been quite strong at 1.83 to the upside, got back above this trend line. If we go too much higher here, we're going to start to hit these trend lines of resistance. So you got a trend line here at 51.78. And then above that, you have 52.50. We can see if we can grind a grow grind above that level here for a bit you can see last time we overthrew these trend lines we did get that pullback ultimately but we did get above that longer term trend line very important trend line there and you can see that trend line going all the way back here to the dot-com bubble april and may of 2001 is the last time we touched those levels and that is where we are right now and then you can see some interactions here in may of 21 april of 22 and if we get all the way up to that upper trend line which it seems like we might that's where we topped out here in december of 21 that would put your price target target all the way up around 55, 97, 5600. And if we get to those levels, I do think that that is going to be the ultimate top, at least for a while. You can see last time we hit that major trend line, that was a significant down move, basically a full year of bearishness. So if we get there, could be a decent move that's about 10 percent higher from here but understand that momentum on the monthly chart is still bearish we can see that this has happened a few times where you had a couple of months of kind of static momentum price still went higher and then eventually it did crater so we'll see how it goes if we get a little bit higher here certainly possible but eventually it will crater in my opinion and then looking at that weekly view you can see a strong week two weeks ago another strong week this week at about half a percent momentum still bearish but we are seeing some bullishness again looking at that upper trend line 5200 or so probably Probably going to get there give us at least a little bit more bullishness going into next week and then we'll see if we can get up to those upper levels here and then looking at that daily chart the concerning part here for me is definitely this downtrend line so you can see where this is what we were hitting at the beginning of april and now we're hitting it again at the beginning of may need to get above these levels here this is a consolidation of resistance momentum and rsi are bullish and it does look good and without any data to really push this around we should hold this bull trend see if we can get up to these previous highs in that 524 area but there is definitely some resistance you can see the highly traded zone current level would be 513.27 as resistance and then above that i have 517.12 current support is 509.77 and then below that would be 505.08
Moving over to the tasty charts here on the monthly, you can see we did take out those ATR stops here in March. So we're in bullish conditions. Got the pullback from that ATR, which is sitting at 523.30. That's where we rejected from on that previous candle. And now we have the bullish candle here, current upper ATR, 525.47. So that would be your upper price target on this month. Momentum still bullish. Really no volume coming through here yet, but it does look okay. And then looking at that weekly chart, same thesis, pulled back to the 21, pulled back to the mid range. ATRs are still down here, so bullish conditions at 485.55. And then looking for this to test that upper ATR, which is sitting at 532.83. Doesn't mean we're going to do it all in one week or anything, but it's certainly the price target, at least for the short term. We've seen it here before. Take out the ATRs, rally up to that previous level, slight pullback, and then get another big move. So it's certainly possible that we see a pretty substantial move here off of this most recent dip low. And then looking at that daily chart, understand that we are in bearish conditions on the daily chart. So your ATR resistance would be 517.97. Typically, there's at least some kind of reaction from there, even if you are going to take it out. So if you hit the ATRs, close above it, take it out, switch into bullish conditions, usually there's at least some kind of pullback here. And then we could push to those upper ATRs on the daily chart that's sitting at 527.40. So might see a little bit of choppy price action in this zone before we head higher. But momentum is bullish. We did see some volume coming through on those pushes to the upside. So it does still look decent, but understand the bearish conditions here on the daily. Moving over to the NASDAQ on the monthly chart. Again, you can see that April close was 4.46 to the downside. So far, we're up 2.58 this month. Pretty strong start to the month, considering it's only been a few days of trading. Coming off of this trend line here, we tested it here in April, tested it again in May, and now we're rallying up. So far, we're still at the top of the candle, so this looks bullish. Current resistance would be up at 18,700, and then next month, 18,900. I think we're probably going to get there. You can also see that we've been hitting this upper trend line. If we did hit that, that would be up around 19,600, 19,700. Momentum, still bearish. RSI, still bearish, so keep that in mind. RSI is still bullish, holding above that SMA, so it does seem like this could get back into overbought conditions, but we do currently have some divergence. We already hit an RSI high. If we get a higher price level here and a lower RSI read, that's going to be definitely concerning, but right now, still looks decent. Looking for some tests of those upper trend lines. Moving over to the weekly chart, very similar to the SPY, hitting that 9 EMA here on the weekly. That's at 17,900. We are just below that level. Momentum did roll to bullish here on the close of that Friday candle. And now you can see on this weekly resistance up around 18,500. So seems like we're going to get a little bit of a push. Hit that SMA here on the RSI. And you can see on this RSI, that SMA is sitting at 6646, waiting for this to get into that zone. And then my guess is that we would probably reject from there. Similar to this, get a breakdown, retest, and then a breakdown. Probably going to head higher, hit those resistances, and then break down from there. See how it plays out. But right now, this is a little bit bullish. And then looking at that daily chart, you can see we've been on this kind of down move, hit the trend line, bounced from there, held a higher low, rallied up. So it does look strong. We're at that 55 EMA. That's resistance at 435.92. Next level would be 438. I think we're probably going to get there. I think that's the highly traded zone here. Question is, do we break this area and push back up to those previous highs? I think it's possible. 446.66 would be that level that I have there. The all-time high would be around 449. Nine. couldn't hold that at all immediately closed right back below that level but seems like we're headed in that zone and if that breaks out there's definitely some room here for some price discovery on the nasdaq and so far it does look bullish on the daily chart moving over to the tasty charts you can see a very similar thesis bullish conditions coming off of that atr resistance tested the 8 ema rallying back up current upper atr would be 446.93 so just barely above that level that we talked about but remember momentum still fading here really no volume coming through on this rally Seems like markets are extended on the monthly chart. Weekly chart showing a little bit more bullishness back above that 8 EMA. Upper ATR is at 465. That's bananas. I don't know if we're going to make it that high. Momentum bearish. We did see some volume coming through on that selling candle on mid-April. And then we did get the reversal on that next candle. So it seems like the selling might have concluded there. Buying coming in around that first ATR band to the downside. And so far, this looks strong on the weekly chart. And then looking at the daily chart here, again, still in bearish conditions. ATR resistance is at 440. 53. We'll see if we can hit that level. I definitely expect to. That's just about 1%, a little bit more than 1% higher. Momentum on the daily rolling to bullish. If we hit that upper ATR, that's going to be at 452, which again would overthrow the levels here. You can see the topping of markets on the NASDAQ in that zone, right around the 446 area. Second ATR band would be 445.13, so could find resistance in there. But we have seen volume coming through on the daily chart. And again, the daily chart still looks a little bit bullish, just concerned with those ATR resistances right there at 440.53.
Moving over to the Russell on the weekly chart, you can see we got a bullish week, 1.78% to the upside. Bouncing off of that 200 SMA, we talked about this last week. Strong hold on that level. Three big candles down, 200, held that level and pushed. You can see over the previous several months, we had been chopping right through that level without any issues. We held the 200 here in January, held the retest here again in April, and now this looks bullish. Current trend line resistance is up around 207, right at that 206.50 level, just beyond it. And then you have this upper trend line sitting around 213. Let's see if we get a push that strong. Momentum's rolling to bullish. RSI is below the SMA, so we might see a resistance point at that SMA. And then we'll see if we get a breakdown on that RSI. We'll see how that plays. But right now it does look bullish, at least for a little bit. One more week of bullish, at least in my opinion. And then looking at this daily chart, you can see that same setup. Big move down, held this zone, higher low setup, big gap higher in rally. Currently sitting on 201.88 as the level. We're waiting to see if this can break to 201. 460 and then you have those upper trend lines up there like i talked about bullish rsi bullish bullish momentum bullish rsi everything looks good here again on the daily chart moving over to the tasty charts again here on the weekly same setup you can see bullish conditions we've been in bullish conditions for a while retested those smas looking to push to those upper levels second atr would be your price target right now and that is at 215.70 you can see it here if we were to overthrow to that upper atr band which is certainly possible 223.60 that would be a nice move again this looks like a strong hold so big dip low two candles of bullish and then looking at it on the daily chart similar thesis except that we're still in bearish conditions here so atr resistance 205.61 want to see it take out that level potentially pull back hold some support and then push higher upper atr is right now 209 on the daily chart 209.34 and i would guess that this initial push is going to be rejected we'll probably need one more higher low setup before we get that ultimate change of trend in my opinion moving over to the dow similar thesis three weeks in a row of bearishness two weeks of bullishness, testing that zone, VWAP, and the 9 EMA on the weekly. That's at 387.21. 387.77 is also that level. But momentum, switching to bullish. RSI looking to retest that SMA. Again, waiting to see where that tops out. Potentially a lower high still in the cards. But I do think we'll get at least one more week of bullishness here. And then looking at that daily chart again, you can see the low, higher low setup, big gap higher, took out the midpoint. Right at the 55, want to see it get above 387.77 like we talked about. If we can get above that, we'll be above all the short-term EMAs and SMAs on the daily chart. Still looks good. I think 392.44 is probably in the cards to take out this level, push to the next one. Then we'll see what happens. If we hit overbought conditions at that point, that's probably the turning point, but we'll see how it plays right now. Still looks bullish. Moving over to the ratios, starting off with the SPY Russell and the NASDAQ SPY. You can see the NASDAQ has been underperforming. We got Russell outperformance this week. We talked about this being the case. Now we're at that support level, 252. If that breaks down, we should see some more Russell Russell outperformance. Momentum and RSI said that that should be the case. So this should continue to pull back a little bit, give us some more Russell outperformance. And then similarly here on the NASDAQ SPY, you can see that move lower, support 55 EMA, momentum turning to bullish. This looks like it's going to push back to that 355 area at this point, at least to that 21 at 352. So it looks like Russell is going to outperform and NASDAQ is going to outperform. So a little bit more of a risk on environment, at least for one more week, in my opinion. Moving over to SPY divided by the M2 money supply, you can see here two weeks of bullishness just like we saw in the spy but critical level here 2449 you can see momentum and rsi definitely bearish on this indicator we had a confluence of trend lines in this previous zone where we broke down from now we're seeing if we can get back to those levels i just don't think we're going to do it so like i've said i think we've got one maybe two more weeks of bullishness but i do think we're going to hit resistance either at these previous highs and double top or potentially even a lower high and then that's going to be quite bearish for in my opinion so right here 2449 critical zone Let's see if we can get above that if we do then you have some trend up around 2507 if we get a change of trend here on the macd then we'll see how that plays out but like i said everything is still bullish here moving over to the mag 7 this chart looks very similar to everything else big down candle two weeks of bullishness we're back above that 349.21 level looking to push to that next one at 367.10 that is the all-time high here for the mag 7 probably going to see momentum roll to bullish on this next candle if it does this will probably have a little bit more push through we could potentially get up to this upper trend up around 399 to 400 if that happens we could see markets pushing to all-time highs once again mag 7's definitely been driving price and it does seem like things are going quite well apple and tesla had been the laggards and they caught some pretty big catalysts over the past few weeks pushing markets higher and this still looks bullish in my opinion and looking at that daily chart you can see consolidation dip low 
Higher low setup, big rally, Apple move, Apple earnings pushing markets higher. And it looks pretty clear like we're going to push to that 367.10 level in my opinion. Moving over to Apple and Tesla here on the weekly charts. You can see both of these had strong weeks, 8.32 and 7.67 respectively. Huge candle here from Apple on their earnings on this last week. Got above all the EMAs and SMAs on the weekly chart. Tested that 186.81 level. Took out a bunch of levels on that candle. Volume huge, momentum huge. This is likely to push higher seems like we're in this consolidation at this point tested these lows a few times pushing back to this upper resistance that would give you the all-time highs again up in that 197 to 199 area and then looking at tesla not nearly as bullish but it was strong so last week like i said 7.67 and then two weeks ago 14.44 so they had strong earnings as well their earnings themselves was not super great but the guidance was strong they talked about a new vehicle talked about robo taxi all of the things that are potentially pushing tesla higher and market like that a lot put some potential growth into the tesla story once again and if it can hold these levels and hold this trend line we could see a push back to that 55 ema at least up around that 218 and we'll see how those two correlate so if we got tesla pushing up another 10 to 15 percent and then apple pushing up another 10 to 15 percent here if both of those stories come true we could absolutely see the nasdaq going to new all-time highs moving over to microsoft and amazon if that last thesis is going to come true both of these need to come along for the ride and and right now they do look pretty decent so apple up only 0.08 but the previous candle 1.8 held the highs momentum still showing bearishness and we're starting to see some strength at that 21 ema at 403.50 if that zone holds we take out this trend line here get back into this trading range then you could absolutely see a push to those all-time highs again at 429.88 and amazon similar thesis had a big pullback on that 15 April candle, 6% to the downside. But the two subsequent candles have almost completely engulfed that down move. Big volume on this last candle. We're almost to that resistance. And at this point, it does kind of seem like we're going to break to this next upper trend, 203.38, which again would be new all-time highs for here for Amazon. So it's not impossible that we see markets headed to new highs. I think Microsoft might be done on this run. It doesn't look as bullish as some of the others. And it is pretty expensive, even relative to its peers. But if it can get through this zone i think we can at least get back to its all-time highs and if those things are happening then we should see markets pushing pretty aggressive as well Moving over to NVIDIA and Meta, you can see Meta up 1.96%. That's off the back of three down candles. Huge selling on that last candle. 21 EMA still hanging in there on the weekly chart. Right at resistance, 454.07. That's the low of this candle back here from 5 February. We'll see if we can get above that level. It is interesting to see how similar these charts look. Pretty decent rally in here. Huge colossal run here on the back of earnings for both of these. And now you can see we have had a pullback. We'll see what it looks Looks like nvidia down 13.5 percent on that candle up 15 percent on the next one and then made some gains here this week 1.2 percent momentum still bearish we'll see if this can recoup its losses back up to those highs around 960 we are at a trend line here as well need that trend line to hold again both of these just seem like they're in super critical zones need it to break higher if it's going to do it if these fade from these resistance areas then maybe that thesis is not going to hold up and we could see more bearishness to come Moving over to staples and discretionary, both of these turned a profit here today, 0.38 and 1.14 for each of these respectively. Staples still looks quite strong even though it didn't rally as much. So we got back above 75.40, we'll see how that plays. You can see this resistance back here from July of last year, need it to get above that level to push that 77.50. At this point, it seems like it's going to do it. Momentum and RSI look bullish, big volume on this week. And similarly here on discretionaries, gapped higher and rallied, then pulled back back from that next level of resistance 180.10 tesla pulled back a little bit as well but momentum switching to bullish should have a couple of weeks here and then rsi waiting to see if that rejects off the sma could be critical or it could cut through just like we saw here in november if it does cut through we should see more bullishness potentially a push up to that 189.38 area but if it rejects from that sma then we're probably going to see a deeper cut with a high in either a double top or a lower high setup just like we talked about so pretty interesting here waiting to see what happens on this momentum but staples still looking quite strong so seems like there's at least a little bit of hesitancy in markets moving over to transports and oil and gas transports turning a very small profit 0.03 we had four weeks in a row of bearishness we wicked a lower low but then we ended up closing on a positive candle we'll see how that plays at this point seems like it's going to find some support that is a big wick rejection on a weekly chart so some buying coming in at that zone 64.89 would be the level of support bounced about a dollar higher from there 
next re next resistance would be 66.63. And then looking at oil and gas, this has been a bit of a dumpster fire. So 169.59 was the most recent high. Now we're trading around the 150.23 area. We also have VWAP in here at 148. That found a little bit of buying, but this seems like it's in the early stages of a bigger down move. Momentum just now stepping down pretty significantly. And you can see a very similar move here on this most recent dip low. Two candles bearish, one candle bullish, big wick rejection. We did find a little bit of bullishness in the short term, retested the SMA area, momentum tried to make a turn, and then it eventually carried through to much deeper lows. Does seem like that's going to be a very similar move to what we are here. It's the exact same setup, big wick low. Might see a week or two of bullishness, but then you would ultimately expect this to pull back down into that 128 area. So overall, transports catching a bottom. Oil and gas could catch a short-term bounce, but I would expect it to go lower in the medium term. Moving over to breadth, you can see 20-day breadth actually was positive on the week, about 30% higher. So we're back into this mid-range here. We'll see what happens on the weekly chart. Critical zone there at 54. Usually when you get here on an up move, you do eventually get to that 80 area, but we've seen it before where it rejected. So you can see here mid-August, retested the zone, eventually made a lower low. Looks very similar to this move here. But it is worth noting that this candle got all the way down here to almost the 6 area on 20-day breadth. And usually when you get that low, you can see a wick low here. We did reject initially from here, but held a higher low and then rallied back up to that 80 area. So I think eventually we're going to see higher highs on this move. Doesn't mean we couldn't see a short-term pullback back into this zone around that 16 area. And then looking at the 50-day breadth, we were actually slightly negative here, which is surprising. Not by much, and it's still holding that 40 level. Need to see that 40 level hold if it's going to go higher. We did wick all the way down to 26, which is a decent low. It's not super low, but we've seen it before. Get into the zone, wick a low, and then end up rallying back up. And I do think that that is a possibility, but I think it's a critical zone. It really needs to do it here. This was a down move into this zone, but you can see we tried to bounce, retest, and ended up going lower. But it's still a pretty similar setup. If it fails here, could be in for some lower lows. Moving over to 200 day breadth, slight bullish candle. This really has been hanging in here pretty strong. So we're still above that 6938 area. Really didn't break down to any deep lows at all. So hard to say exactly what's going to happen. We haven't really had a substantial breakdown in a while. We got into the zone back here in December of 23. Still hanging out in the zone. Couple of wicks to these lows, but everything keeps getting bought up, which honestly is a little bit more concerning. You want to see this get into some much deeper lows, and then you can expect a bigger rally out of that area similar to what we had here july of 23 all the way to that october low and that was a super low bottom here for markets got super aggressive rally for many many weeks out of that zone and then we've been chopping sideways out of that so we'll see how it plays right now still technically holding support but below some of those shorter term emas on the 200 day breadth moving over to the dollar you can see it was a pretty bearish week almost one percent down momentum rolling to bearish rsi right on top of that sma if it's going to bounce needs to do it here Otherwise, it seems to me like this is going to break down further. Momentum just stepping down, and you can see last time we had that, it did rally. It did fall pretty significantly from that zone, similarly here. And if that does happen, we should see equities going higher with the dollar falling down into that 102, 102.50 area. We were watching this as a rally, bull flag rally, tried to break out, couldn't do it. We've been looking at that on the shorter time frames for a while, but right now this looks weaker. Still technically a bull trend holding above all the EMAs and SMAs, that nine EMA sitting there at 104.70 or so right in this zone. Did test that this last week ended up holding but ultimately i do think this is going to break down which should fit into that bullish thesis over the next week or two moving over to yields big bear week here for yields on the back of that employment data soft employment data soft jobs data sent yields lower because the fomc is potentially going to cut a little bit sooner as the jobs market starts to soften a little bit more this is one of the weaker jobs data that we've seen in a while especially with the unemployment rate hitting a new high at 3.9 relative to what we'd been seeing and it does seem like both of these are set to roll over first week of slightly of moving towards that bearish momentum on both of these our size breaking down significantly if we do see a move down like we saw here so you got a big move higher started to see some cracks in the momentum and eventually followed through that is what we're seeing here you can see that first candle second candle was still a big move higher so we could still see that but eventually it did make much much lower lows so similarly here get a candle high maybe a bigger dip could just go straight down certainly possible as well and similarly here you can see that first step to bearish momentum we did end up going a little bit higher but eventually we did fall here and then momentum similarly starting to crack 
just like this candle got a couple of candles higher and then eventually did go down so we'll see how it plays eventually i think yields are going to pull back a little bit but right now they're kind of in a topping pattern waiting for that initial move down moving over to bonds both of these catching a bigger move higher so j and k junk bonds catching a bid 0.58 back above this consolidation low back into the mid range seems like we're going to push to 9482 we've been watching that for a while momentum rolling to bullish rsi needed to see it get above that sma here and then similarly on TLT seems like we might have bottomed a little bit so we got a big move down got a bull candle momentum switching to bullish volume coming in and golfing candle back above 89.16 so maybe this is a higher low setup here and if that's true then we could see TLT start to push back up to this at least most recent high around that 100 area could be a nice little change of trend there for TLT and that does fit with the thesis that yields are eventually going to pull back to some lower lows just like we saw in the previous chart so seems like bonds are catching a bid here and could potentially go higher over the medium term moving over to volatility we got the vix here on the weekly chart again another big bearish candle took out that 14.7 area we talked about it we thought it was going to happen sure enough we're getting back into these most recent lows and once you get a culmination here back into the lows usually it takes a while before we see anything major happen again which could give you a couple of weeks of bullishness off of these current levels so right now seems like we're getting back into a little bit of complacency and potentially a little bit more bullish over the next couple of weeks based on the VIX chart. Moving over to my accounts, this was a new all time high here for my accounts. 131.682, about 1% higher on the week, which was about in line with the NASDAQ. I'm still underperforming in my Roth account. Really need to get that one back on track. I'm trying to do it here with the Russell. The Russell has not been super great. It's been super choppy pricing. So we'll see how it plays right now. 202 put for the Monday session at 80 cents. And then here on the queues, finished around 436. I have some shares here, 200 shares with a 433 call. That's my lower call. For five days from now, that's for $3.63, so max profit there, 436.60, and that's pretty much right where we're at already, so might have to roll that up and out. We'll see how that plays. But right now, I do have a second position on to potentially establish, so 436 put for $1.50, and then a 438 call as a potential setup for a covered call for a dollar. Pretty well out of the money there, so looking to get a sign potentially on this position, buy some shares at a little bit cheaper price, and then we got that covered call to come in and play some protection if markets dip on the Monday session. Overall, still bullish going into the Monday session and fairly aggressive at that. Pretty moderately bullish. Let me know down in the comments section what you think of a potential second wave of inflation. And if it takes six years to culminate, is that even going to affect us the same way now? Or would we see the Fed be more reactive and be able to stomp that out? What are your thoughts on the future of inflation? Otherwise, definitely like and subscribe if you got any value to this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.